Welcome to Mentor Siemens Business Design Con 2019 presentation. In this presentation, we'll discuss Power Aware Simulation. The challenges with today's high speed PCB designs are that as the speed of the signals get faster, the voltage and timing margins start to shrink. Other challenges are that uh, the PDN needs to be well designed to deliver power to the chip effectively, but the space on the PCB is shrinking and fewer reference layers are available to cut cost. So historically, SI and PI simulations are done separately and interaction between the signals and the PDN were ignored. But we can no longer ignore these effects as unwanted interactions between data signals and the PDN can result in intermittent data errors that cause systems to crash. Power array simulation in Hyperlinks allows you to simulate combined signal and PDN behavior to determine if you have enough voltage and timing margins for first pass design success. So what is power aware analysis? It is time domain simulations of high speed signals that include the effects of interactions with the system power network on a PCB. There are three different PDN effects which we need to consider. The first effect is simultaneous switching noise or SSN. The second effect is via to via coupling. Third effect is the non-ideal return path. Let's look at how to create the PDN models in Hyperlinks SIPI. To create the via to via coupling model, select some signal nets as shown here, and choose Analyze 3D EM, Manage PowerWare SI models, and with four signal via to via coupling, option enabled, click the create button. This PDN model extractor wizard lets you set up some of the extraction parameters and simply click run analysis to create the model. The same approach is used to create the PDN model at the power pins. Select the for non-ideal PDN option and click the create button to invoke the advanced decoupling wizard. Once the models are created, the files are auto-populated in the dialog box. You have the choice of including or excluding them in the time domain analysis by checking or unchecking the check boxes. Now let's look at how to interactively simulate with SSN effects on some DDR4 nets. Choose Analyze 3D EM, Manage Power Aware SI models, and enable the Z parameter model at the power pins. Enable the Power Aware effects button. Here I have nets from one byte lane selected. Let's simulate write cycle and observe the power rail at the controller and the eye of a data net at the DRAM. Now we have 8 byte lane selected and let's simulate again. Now let's compare the results. On the left is I at DQ0 at the DRAM and 1.2 volt rail at the controller while a byte lane was switching. The I height is 542 millivolt and I width is 411 picoseconds. And noise on 1.2 volt rail is about 48 millivolt. And when 8 byte lanes were switching, the I has collapsed due to more bits of switching with the I height reduced to 516 millivolt and I width to 408 picoseconds. As you can see, the noise on 1.2 volt rail has increased from 48 millivolt to 120 millivolt. Now let's take a look at the data read results. The results on the left are while one by lane is switching. The peak to peak noise is about 94 millivolt and then I Height at the controller is around 500 millivolt 
and I width is around 406 picoseconds. Peak to peak noise on the 1.2 volt rail at the DRAM while two byte lanes was switching is about 121 millivolt, slight increase from 94 millivolt when only one byte lane was switching. The eye height at the controller when two byte lanes where switching is around 483 millivolt and eye width is around 407 picoseconds. As you can see, the eye width did not get affected, but the eye height has decreased slightly. Now let's interactively simulate byte lane 0 and byte lane 7 with via to via coupling effects. Before simulating the nets with via to via coupling effects, let's compare the reference planes of the byte lane 0 and byte lane 7 using the 3D viewer of Hyperlink's hybrid solver. The stack up has six signal layers and four planes. Let's select the byte lane 0. You can see that it is routed from top to the first inner layer referencing to ground planes. Now let's select the byte lane 7. You can see that it is routed from top to signal layer 5 referencing to 1.2 volt and 2.5 volt. This was done intentionally to compare the simulation results with ground reference signals. Here I have byte lane 0 selected in hyperlink sport sim. We can see that DQ0 is stuck low and the rest of the nets are set as outputs assigned with different PRBS patterns. Now let's make sure that all the via to via coupling models are disabled. We will next quickly simulate the nets in the oscilloscope and observe at the receiver of DQ0, which was stuck low. You can see that peak to peak noise is around 58 millivolt. This is the noise coupled by the package from the nearby selected nets in byte lane 0. Now let's enable the byte lane 0 via to via coupling model and simulate again. Let's change the previous waveform color to green. The peak to peak noise is around 71 millivolt, not a large increase from 58 millivolt with just packet coupling. Now let's compare the results with the byte lane 7. The peak to peak noise on DQ59 with just package coupling is around 98 millivolt. The peak to peak noise on DQ59 with veer to veer coupling is now 186 millivolt. As you can see, DQ59 has more via to via coupled noise than DQ0. This is due to the fact that DQ59's current return path is not ideal. Remember that it references to power planes instead of ground planes, therefore injecting more noise into the power cavities. Now let's simulate a couple of DDR4 nets using the DDRX wizard in Hyperlink's SIPI. Let's open the DDRX wizard. You can see that uh, only DQ0 and DQ59 nets are enabled. And coupling and power wear options are turned off. Now let's run the simulation to observe the I for both read and write cycles. This is the I for DQ0 read. 
here is the I for DQ0 right. And here is the I for DQ59 read. And here is the I for DQ59 write. As you can see, the I's look pretty good without any PDN effects. Now let's include the coupling from both nearby VA and package, but exclude the trace to trace coupling, and then rerun the simulation. Here is the I for DQ0 read with via to via coupling enabled. Here is the I for DQ0 write. Here is the I for DQ59 read. And here is the I for DQ59 write. As you can see, the via to via coupling did not affect the I for DQ0 but it did affect DQ59's I adversely, as we have already seen earlier. Next, let's include the SSN effect as well by enabling the Power Aware option in the DDRX wizard. And rerun the simulation. Here is the I for DQ0 read with both SSN and via to via coupling effects. Here is the I for DQ0 write. And here is the I for DQ59 read. And here is the I for DQ59 write. So here is the table to compare all of the DDR4 wizard results. Yellow means 5 to 10% change from the ideal BDN results. Orange means 10 to 20% change. And red means over 20% change. As you can see, with just via to via coupling effects, both timing margins and noise margins are affected. After adding SSN effects, as expected, the noise margins got worse. This ability to isolate different effects could help SI engineers make focused design decisions.